Good morning, class. Today we're going to learn about Unit 3, Lesson 3, Associations and Categorical Data. Take a minute and look over the learning targets. Okay, here's your warm up. There's a two way table here, and take a look at the three situations below and try and write down or describe the interpretation of the percentage in terms of the situation. So what I'm getting at is try to put words to go with the 10% and where it came from in the table. Pause your video here, write down your answers, and then when you unpause, you can see what the responses are. All right, here you'll see the answers now. If I drag it up a little bit, I want to keep the table on here. So the 10% means that 10% of the people who prefer cake are left-handed. Okay. The 67% in question number two says out of the 270 people that are right-handed, 67% or 180 of them prefer pie. And lastly, the 30% takes the 90 that prefer cake out of everybody surveyed, which is 300 people. So 30% of the total population prefer cake and are right-handed. Okay, with this activity, I want you to take a look at the two-way table, read the information, and then you are going to be trying to fill out this frequency table. Pause your video and do that now. Okay, so what you wanted to do was take each category and divide it by the total for the column. By doing 20 divided by 28, you are going to get 71%. Then in the next one down, you take 8 divided by 28 and you get 29%. Those add up to 100. In the column for high nitrate concentration, healthy is 5. So we'll take 5 divided by 27 and we get 19%. And likewise, 22 divided by 27 is 81%. Now I'm going to slide it down and we're going to look at some questions. All right, so this question says, when there is a low nitrate concentration, this column, which had a higher relative frequency, healthy or unhealthy coral? And you can see that the answer is healthy because that's 71%, where unhealthy was only 29%. In question C, it's talking about high nitrate concentration, which is the column to the right. And in this one says, is there a higher relative frequency of healthy or unhealthy coral? The answer is unhealthy coral, because that's 81%. We're gonna answer a few more questions about the same data on the next page. Hopefully you've written down that frequency table that you had filled out before, because these questions apply to that same table. Now we're gonna talk about an association between coral health and the level of nitrate concentration. The key is there is an association if there's a big difference in the percentages, and there's not an association if the percentages are close to each other. It's hard to say that there's a rule of thumb you could almost argue that maybe it's got to be bigger than 10% for them to be an association, and there would be no association if it's less than 10%. So we're going to say for an association between coral health and the level of nitrate concentration, the answer is yes. This is because it's 71% in the frequency table for low nitrate concentration for healthy coral and only 19% for high nitrate concentration for healthy coral. So looking across the row there for coral or healthy coral, 
at the different levels of nitrate concentration. Okay, the next question. Um, so here, let's see, we need to explain our, reason, our reasoning. And based on this data, is there a possible association between coral health and the level of silicon dioxide concentration? So once again, I'm gonna look at the healthy coral row and one percentage is 44% and the other is 46%. Those percentages are really close together. So the answer would be no, there is no clear association about the impact of low silicon dioxide or high silicon dioxide for healthy coral. For the next couple videos to keep the length of this video shorter, I'm going to display it. I want you to pause your video, write down and try to answer the questions. And then when you unpause the video, you can see what the answers are and I'll do a bit of explanation. So pause it now. Okay, here's the responses. The first thing I did was look at the largest preference in each age group. So 58% of four to 10 year olds prefer sneakers without laces. And 44% of 11 to 17 year olds prefer sneakers with laces. And lastly, 56% of 18 to 24 year olds prefer sneakers, uh, shoes that aren't sneakers. So there is a possible association between age and shoe preference because these percentages are so much higher than the percentages you get in the other categories for that age group. So if I had looked at um, the 12 divided by 36, that's only one third or 33%, and three divided by 36 is only one twelfth. Likewise here, 48 is significantly greater than 39, 87 is significantly greater than 54. To really be sure, you might want to calculate all the percentages out of the total column. Try and answer this question now. Pause the video. Okay, here are your answers. So take a look at the percentages I wrote down. I did seven out of 89 to get 8% and then 82 out of 89. And you can see overwhelmingly right-handed people prefer pen. But if you look at the six versus the five, there's really no association for the pencil preference between left-handed and right-handed. Likewise, there's no association for left-handed people, whether they prefer pencil or pen. The key is the, the biggest association you have is between right hand or is right handed people overwhelmingly prefer pen. Okay, take a look at this pro problem, pause it while you try and answer it. Okay, for question one, I put in the values of seven here and the value of 14 here. What I did was total up the row and I got 12. So when I calculate the percentage of folks treated with ice that returned to playing in two days, it was 67%. And that means 33% took returning to playing in more than two days. So I wanted to make sure that there was an association between returning to playing in less than two days and the treatment type. So I wanted to make sure that treating with ice was very different than, I mean, treating with heat was very different than treating with ice. So that's why I chose that to be seven out of 21. I could have picked different numbers. I could have picked, oh, I don't know, one and three. Um, something where it came out to be overwhelmingly less for treated with heat in this column. All right. Okay, I hope I didn't do that too fast, but now I changed the numbers and I put 14 in this column and seven in this column. For question two asked, what two values could you use to complete the two-way table to show that there is no association 
between returning to playing in less than two days and the treatment type. So I wanted the percentages for the treatment type to be the same. And that means I just had to have something that was about two thirds of the total in this column. Whether question one or question two is easier to answer, I really think it's question two because you just had to kind of match the percentage in the second row to match the percentages in the first row to make no association true. Last question on the next page. Okay, go ahead and try this cool down on your own. Pause the video here. Okay, so here's the answers. You really can't say there's an association between the state, California or New York, and the amount of median debt. One thing I looked at is I quickly calculated the percentage on the rows. I took your median debt at least 9,000, the number of people at California universities divided by the total California universities is 77%. Doing a similar percentage for New York universities, you get 79%. Those two percentages are so close together that there's really, you can't argue that Californians have more debt and New York university students have less debt. They have about the same amount of debt because their median debt that's at least 9,000 is about the same amount. So you can't look at the raw numbers, but you need to look at the percentages to make this determination. That's it for the lesson. Go ahead and try the lesson 3-3 homework that is out there on the Google Classroom.